Hi, I'm Ken. I'm a show through guide with Myers RV Superstores. And today we'd like to take you into our store. One of the questions I get asked often at the end of a show through are some things that people might want for the RV. And again, it depends on what kind of RV they have, whether it's a trailer or a motorhome or whatever. So we're gonna take a walk in the store and point out a few things that uh, might be good to have. So we're in the store and here's one of the things I most often recommend. Uh, if you take a look over here, this is what a vent would look like on the top of pretty much any RV. And of course they open up, but once they're open, if it rains, you would get rain inside the coach. So what we recommend to people is that they put a cover, a vent cover, over the cover. And the covers you see on this rack here, they come in different colors. There's black, uh, white, smoked covered, and they're slightly different styles depending on whether you have a fan in the vent opening in your coach. Uh, there's a different fan we can put in the coach, and in that case, we do like the cover that goes a little bit higher that allows the original vent to open up enough so you get a good flow of air. So this is a great thing to have, particularly um, in a bedroom space where if you leave the vent open, you're gonna forget it and you're gonna get things wet. So this is a great addition to protect your coach. One of the must haves for a towable, not a fifth wheel, but a trailer, is an electric stand. These electric jack stands are very important because it helps you level the coach from front to back but in addition to that, it saves an awful lot of work on a hot, humid day like it is today in western New York. Beautiful day, but hot and humid. So what you have here is an electric switch that will raise and lower the coach. And it's important because when you're attaching your coach to your tow vehicle, you need to lift the vehicle up so you can put sway bars on and weight bars. You can't really get them on unless you lift things up and it makes them easy to put on and easy to take off. If you haven't got one on your unit, when you do purchase your unit, makes a great Father's Day gift uh, or a great Christmas gift, and it saves a lot of time and it makes it a lot easier to level your coach. One of the questions I get often is, what happens if you don't have power? Well, there's a fuse connection here that goes right directly to the battery in the front of the coach, and if you blow a fuse and didn't happen to have one with you, there's a little port on top that can accept a wrench fitting and you can actually manually operate this to get your weight bars on and off. It's really a must. It even has a light on it in case you have to hook up or unhook and it's dark. Over the last few years, we're finding that most towable units come in now pre-wired for a camera. Now motorhomes generally have backup, what we refer to as backup cameras, but now we can get these on towable units. You see here a couple of different size screens are available. They show you on the display, this is what the camera would look like. You'll see, you'll see units with this housing already on the trailer, which indicates it's already pre-wired, and they can quickly install the camera. It hooks up by Bluetooth. They usually power it. If the wiring is not in place behind it, they can power it so they can retrofit to any coach where they have clearance lights in the back, and they usually do, so it's a pretty easy install. It's a great feature for people who are a little nervous about backing up a unit, and it's great to be able to watch what's going on with your trailer uh, while you're towing it. One of the things we always recommend that people do if you have slide outs, your slide outs have what they refer to as rubber seals on the edges. Now you must remember that RVs are not submarines, so these, these uh, slide out rubber seals are just to keep wind and rain out. And in order to keep them supple, they have what they call RV rubber seal conditioner. And it's very simple to do. It's a simple maintenance trick. Uh, maybe once a month or so if you open your slides up or when you get to where you're going, if you, if you go out in RV once a month or so, just take some of this and all you have to do is spray it on the seals. Just let it drip and run. There's no rubbing or anything. Just be fairly liberal about spraying the seals and they will last forever. Now, one thing you want to be careful of is this says 
rubber RV rubber seal conditioner. First of all, I'd like to point out it's not pure rubber. It's actually a compound, so don't use silicone or a petroleum-based product on the seals. That being said, they have different kind of lubrication that they refer to slides. Uh, usually these are for the slide mechanism, metal, for example. This is one type. Here's another one, Kiwi Loop. This is not for the rubber seals. So be sure that you look very carefully that it says RV Rubber Seal Conditioner. And just spray that liberally on all the seals on all your slides. Some units have one slide, two, three, four, as many as five. Just spray it on liberally and those seals flop in and out as the slide goes in and out and that'll keep them nice and supple. Another product I get asked about a lot with trailers and fifth wheels is the issue of leveling. And I always get asked, I don't see, for example, level bubblers on the coaches. Well, the reason for that is some people don't use them or don't like the look of them on their coach. But they have different kinds. These are ones that we use to level, okay? This is another type. Now this is what they refer to as a pocket level. You could put this, uh, for example, just set it on a table or even a countertop, and you can see when you center the bubble whether the coach is level. These will tell you generally from front to back or side to side. Fifth wheels are a little bit different. Fifth wheels use this kind of thing. On the front of the fifth wheel hitch system, you'll see on the trailer, you can put this so the driver can actually see a little bit about what's going on. Uh, sometimes when you're backing in, you can find yourself being able to adjust the coach by pulling forward or back, or at the very least, once you've taken the fifth wheel off your tow vehicle, you can use this big bubble to see which way you need to be going. This is generally something you put on the front of the coach. Also, they make this one. This one levels both axes simultaneously. This kind of thing is you basically set it flat, either on a floor or on a table or a counter, and just work to center the bubble. And actually, uh, I think this one's got a light on it. So this makes leveling very, very easy. All you need to do to apply these is take your vehicle to a reasonably level place, a parking lot, for example. Just be careful, some parking lots, of course, are set for drainage. But try to find yourself a good level surface, uh, school parking lot, something like that. And you can apply these yourself. One of the things we like to look at today are stabilizers depending on what we're trying to stabilize. Well, first of all, this is a jack system that would be put under one of the deeper slides that go out, especially if it has a couch and a dinette. And if you're a little bit concerned about seating a number of people in the slide between the dinette and a couch, this is a little slide jack that easily inserts under the corners of a slide just to stabilize that in case you have a lot of company. Now the next thing is the very familiar stabilizers that you generally find. They're called scissors jacks, but they're actually stabilizers. They're not really meant to jack anything up. It's just to stabilize um, a coach so that when you're walking around, you don't feel like you're getting vertigo with that slight movement. So you'll find these generally in the four corners of the coach. Um, the next thing we have is a tripod stabilizer for the front of a fifth wheel. Sometimes people find, especially if there's a bedroom up here, that it's kind of wiggly. And if there's just enough movement in it that bothers them, if they're sleeping, they have this stabilizer that hooks right up under the fifth wheel in the, uh, in the ball section. And you can adjust this and it takes any movement out of the coach. Some people use them, some people don't. This is a new one that's kind of a great thing. The bottom of a step, if I can get a better picture here for you. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but when you have three or four metal steps that you pull out and fold down, those last two steps, generally, as you step on them, you get a little rocking motion. And that really troubles some people. So they now make this stabilizer that would go under the bottom step of a multi-step system to enter a coach so you feel you're on solid ground. Some people really find it hard getting in and out of a coach when you hit those last steps, particularly the two at the bottom, you get some rocky movement like that 
and that can cause some issues with people in their balance. So this is a great device that's come out fairly recently. If you want to keep your coach looking good for years, it's important to do the outside work. And they've got a lot of products that make washing and waxing your coach, keeping it shiny, really easy. First thing is we recommend that you work on your roof first. Uh, and the reason is most roofs are rubber roofs. And as you brush them, you'll get a little kind of a residue off the rubber that runs off the coach as you're cleaning the roof line. Now, what's a good thing to do is make sure you have enough time to spray the sides after you get done with the roof or if you can have somebody spray it while you're working on the roof. It's a good idea to get that cleaned off right away because if you let that dry in the sides of the coach after you're done with the roof, it takes a little more elbow grease to get it off. Now, if you decide to go up on the roof, you've got to think safety first. The first thing we recommend is to take one of these brushes that expand, okay? This way, you can stay in the middle of the coach. You shouldn't have to walk to the edges of the coach. Always stay in the middle. You can work from side to side, work yourself back towards your ladder. You know the old saying, don't paint yourself in a corner. So if you go up the ladder in the back of the coach, start in the front of the coach, expand this out, and you can take a bucket. You can take a rope with a little hook on it. Somebody can hook on your bucket and your water, and you can carefully pull it up. Now this particular one, if I can swing this around without taking a light in the store here, it has a hose connection on the end, which is kind of handy. So you can put a shutoff valve there, except I think this one already has it. Yes, this already has a shutoff valve. So you can be cleaning, and then when you want to rinse, turn the valve, your hose is connected to the end, and you can actually rinse the area that you just finished. Now for products, and by the way, there's different kinds of brushes. I've got this one. I've got another one here. I kind of like this one. I've got both of these for my unit. And this one has a nice soft brush to use on the side. Remember, when you're working on the side of your coach, especially if you have decals, let's be kind to the decals. So no high pressure pressure washers. If you're going to use a pressure washer to save some water, turn the pressure down. And use soft brushes where it's recommended. Follow the owner's manual that came with your unit. Now the next thing is product. Here we have a variety of things. Here's what they call rubber roof treatment with UV protection. This is a great product. I've used this myself. Uh, you can take this and not only does it clean the roof, you can, it also offers some UV protection. It also comes in smaller containers. This is another one, a rubber roof protectant. Sometimes, if you use this rubber roof cleaner, you can go back over it. You could do a whole motorhome top with this, like a 30-foot motorhome, easily. I've done mine with this product, and just a quick spray on after you've cleaned the roof. The next thing is we have awning cleaner here. Uh, we have a protect and shine. Now, I want to say something about this. This is something that washes and also leaves a nice finish on your coach. So you're kind of getting two things done at the same time. Now, if you're one of those people that likes to polish things, we do have a wash and wax, but I want you to consider a couple of things. If you have a fiberglass coach, just like fiberglass boats, you want to be a little careful about using the, any kind of a wax that has that natural carbona wax in it. Sometimes if you leave it on too long, that carbona wax will kind of turn yellow, and then you have to strip it off and reshine the coach again. So, Think about what you're doing. That Carnuba stuff works pretty well if you have a metal-sided uh, vehicle. But I personally like the wash and wax that has something like they would use, for example, uh, on, a, on a Corvette or a really nice car. And this one is biodegradable liquid, safe for gel coat, finish, and decals. That's important. If your coach has decals and not paint, then you want to be careful what you use. So make sure you read your labels carefully and follow instructions. I know that's the un-American thing, but read the instructions. The next thing is black streak bug remover. Let's talk about the black streaks. Uh, water, rainwater runoff, you know, every raindrop has a, a little particle of dirt in it, and we often get these black marks down the side of the coach. Now, the good news is most coaches today have a gutter system, uh, especially the aluminum-sided coaches. They used to be awfully difficult because you get runoff off the top of the roof, just like off the shelf, and it would cover the whole side of the coach. Well, now they have a gutter system, so 
generally the water will flow to the four corners of the top of the coach and the gutters have a pretty long spigot like on the end to try to keep the water draining off the roof and away from the coach. But if you do get some black marks in those four corners, this is a great product here by Thefford to clean those uh, uh, black marks off. This is also great to get bugs off the front of your coach. For those of you people that hang around in Florida and they have those little bugs that fly together, they refer to as love bugs, you want to get this product and get those off your coach, particularly if it's fiberglass. Those bugs, I'm told, have an oxalic acid. If you kind of leave that on the fiberglass, it could actually pit the fiberglass. So keeping your coach clean is important to keep it looking good, especially for bugs and black marks. Okay, here's another product that I recommend heartily, especially in areas where you have bees that like to cluster and nest in places. And bees are what kind of mess things up like furnaces, for example. Uh, what these screens are designed to do is to keep bees from nesting in furnaces and in water heaters. Uh, and, and let me point them out. First of all, what we recommend that people do is go to your furnace output on the outside of your coach and take a picture with your cell phone. So when you come into the store, you can look and see on any of these what kind of furnace that this will work with. For example, this one is a Suburban, and the Suburbans can either be vertically or horizontally, but they're generally long like this with an intake and an exhaust. Now the reason this is important, and the reason that bees will nest inside the exhaust port, the hot port coming out of a furnace, is they sense something that as humans we can't sense, and I'm told that when you burn propane, the byproduct of any combustion of anything you burn is water vapor, carbon monoxide, maybe a little carbon dioxide, and something that we can't detect. Now you know that natural gas and, and propane have an odor to it, but we humans put that odor in so it's detectable to prevent accidents. But something else is in that that we can't smell, and it's sulfur. So after a device has been used a few times, in other words, your furnace has been burned a few times, it may leave that trace of sulfur that attracts bees. And most people only use their furnace a little bit in the fall and maybe a little bit in the spring. And so they don't use it all summer and don't notice that bees have nested inside the exhaust for your furnace. So that's what these screens are designed to do. So it just depends on which device you have. Now this one is uh, for a Suburban. You can, in place of this, you can actually use this on the same long feature, okay? Uh, the rest of these are for hot water tanks. Uh, this one is also for a furnace. This is an RV furnace that looks something like this. And then we have for uh, Atwood 6 gallon and, and Atwood 10 and Suburban 6 gallon, we have a screen that goes over that outside covering from um, your, your uh, uh, furnace or hot water heater. Uh, this is another one. RV water heater cover. So this is for one of the larger ones, 10, 12, or 16 gallon water heaters. So it's very important that you think about putting these on because what happens is if the bees put a nest inside the exhaust port of your furnace, remember RV furnaces for safety, fans come on first, they have to push a volume of air hard enough to trip a safety to allow the propane to fire. What happens is the bees build a nest in there that you haven't noticed, your furnace comes on and we get calls on this all the time in our service department. The fan comes on and then immediately turns off. The furnace doesn't fire. And the first thing we tell them is one, make sure your battery's fully charged because that fan has enough voltage to turn that fan fast enough for that safety switch. If your battery's okay and perhaps you're plugged into city power, then the next thing to look for is look down the hole of that output on your furnace and see if somebody's home. If something's in there, you're going to have to get them out of there, but you might want to wait till they're not home, like at night or wait till there's a colder temperature. Well, we want to give you a few thoughts about generators. This is another question I get asked frequently. Uh, if you were going to buy a generator for your RV, what should you buy? Well, to start with, the first thing people want to know is what will it take to run the AC? 
and generally speaking, we need at least a 3,000. Now, when you buy a generator, I'm going to point to this box over here. It'll say, this particular one here says 3,200 uh, watts peak and 2,800 running. So, at the most that this would put out is 3,200. That would be about enough to start an air conditioner, uh, but it says 2,800 running, continuous running. I would prefer maybe to go for an air conditioner to be on the safe side and leave a little capacity to do something else in the coach. I think more about a 3,500 watt generator. So that's the discussion to have about AC. Now, outside of using your AC, this would be pretty good to run pretty much anything in a coach. Uh, it would keep your refrigerator going. It would keep uh, uh, your microwave. You could use things like that simultaneously. But again, to run an AC unit continuously off a generator, I think your minimum should be about 3,500 unless you have what they call uh, one of the newer soft starts. And uh, that's a new technology that's, that's coming out more often. Again, always check your owner's manual to see what size air conditioner you have in your coach. Fairly typical is 13,500 BTU. There's some 15,000 BTU. The bigger, the more energy it takes to get them started. Not so much the running, but the starting. Uh, the generator here on the floor is really large. This is a 7,500 watt. Uh, usually for a house, if you put in an all-house generator, they start usually at about 8,000. Uh, motorhomes typically will have at least a 5,500 watt generator. Larger motorhomes can be up as much as 10,000 watts. Uh, here we have a portable generator. This is a 2,000. And again, this would be enough to keep batteries charged. You could run your microwave. Uh, pretty much anything in the coach you want to power up except the AC. Uh, you could probably run your microwave here pretty safely as long as you're not running a lot of other things at the same time. But if you need more power, and this is the one you have, you can also pair them. There's one over here. You can actually buy another unit like this, this being a 2000. You can buy another 2000, and then you'd have 4000 watt capacity, and they have a cord that pairs the two generators together. And that would give you enough power to pretty much do anything you want. It would easily start pretty much any AC unit that you'd have in an RV. Well, a favorite topic for people anywhere, whether you're home or in an RV, is television. I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, we're camping. We're not going to be sitting around watching TV. But actually, you're missing out because uh, during football season or the Olympics recently, uh, the Summer Olympics, it's great to have TV. Uh, a lot of people enjoy sitting outside at night because you can watch TV outside if you have the hookups for it. So we're just going to do a general discussion here today about a few things that are available to you. Uh, for satellite, typically the portable satellites look like this. Now when I say portable, you can actually get a satellite dish that is like this. You can simply hook the wire up to it. It goes to the receiver in your coach, and the receiver in your coach powers the satellite. So it's very simple. There's not a lot of electrical hookups to it. If you're not going to set it out on a table or something, right next to me, they have these tripod mounts. And it folds up, and you can detach this from the tripod. So again, you can just set this outside. And it's very easy. Once you plug into this and plug into your receiver, your receiver powers it through the connecting cable and once you turn it on this will automatically find the satellite from the area that you're in. Now the next part of the discussion is where do we put the satellite? Do we keep it portable on a tripod? Are we going to set it outside on a picnic table? Or are you thinking about an installation on the roof of your vehicle? And there's some pros and cons to that. Um, you can get a roof mount so that you can take the dome off and store it away. And why would you want to take it off? Well, if you end up in a park where there's a lot of trees and obstructions and your satellite dish can't see the sky in the direction it needs, whereas if this is portable, you can take it out the length of the wire 
okay, the length of your wire, if you carry enough wire with you, and you can set it anywhere in the opening outside your camper. Uh, remember, as you back into your site, there'll be at least an opening to the front of the site, and that's usually sufficient to find the sky space that you need for your satellite. Now, one more thing to consider is you'll find that most coaches today are already pre-wired for cable and satellite. So when you look into your coach, you'll see someplace in your service department something like this, and they're marked. It'll say uh, cable or satellite. It may say, there may be another set of these that says TV1 and TV2. And then what gives you the option of doing is if your site has a cable hookup, you can actually input to one TV on whatever cable is provided at your site, and your other TV can be on satellite. And there's east and west satellite, so you can get a great deal of coverage even when you're away from home, you can keep track of stuff sometimes in your local stations at home. And it's a great way to pass the time, especially on a rainy day. But it's a lot of fun for people to sit outside. We see this all the time in the evening. Uh, they're sitting out watching things. The, the kids before bedtime can sit outside for a little while and watch TV. But remember, when you think about getting one of the portable satellites, uh, uh, satellite dishes, remember, if you're going to try to run two TVs off the same satellite, then you need to make sure you purchase the antenna that has two outputs, one for each TV, and each TV will need a separate receiver. Now, don't panic about how to set all this up. Some people are DIY, uh, DIYs, uh, but your provider, uh, for example, DISH, uh, uh, will come to your unit and set this up for you. If you're a customer of the satellite service, the technician will come and set it up just like they would at your house. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check out our description below for more information. And if you're looking for your next camper purchase, please consider Myers RV for your next investment. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.